possible to bring on a sequestration order? Yes, sir. Whereby family members will be allowed in and certain officers who are in charge of various uh, aspects of the investigation will be coming out. Yes, and we can bring on the motion, please. All right, let's bring down the jury. Session, be Cell phones and beepers are off. <clears throat> the evening of February 4th, 2015. Lisa and Ann Trevicola, a married couple serving their country in the United States Coast Guard, returned home to go to bed. It was a night like any other night the evidence will show. Only about 1.30 in the morning of February 5th of 2015, it became a very different night. The evidence will show that at that time, Adrian Thomas Lloyd blasted his way using a shotgun, two rounds fired through the front door of 11 Meeting House Road, where they lived in Bourne. He scaled the steps up to their second floor of bedroom, discarded the shotgun he used to gain entrance, and entered the bedroom where they had been sleeping. He had on his person at that time a handgun and a rifle. The rifle discharged at least one round while he was there, and the handgun discharged at least 15 rounds, 11 of which hit and eventually killed Lisa Trebnikova. Anna Trebnikova was hit or wounded at least four separate times. In the arm, in the chest, in the thigh, in one that's shattered her humerus, which is also in her arm. Now, my name is Brian Glenn, as I said to you before. With me is Michael Dunvin, and the hustle assistant this is going to be Sean Hatch from the State Police with the introduction of the evidence in this case. This is the opportunity that I have to address you with you a major outline of what I expect the evidence in this case will show. Nothing that I'm going to say is evidence in the case. The evidence has to come in through the witness. But the way that this case will unfold for you will be through the witnesses. And some of the witnesses may have a very big part in one aspect of the case, and a minor part in a different aspect of the case. So you're going to have to wait until all of the evidence is presented to you to be able to put it all together. And that's one of the reasons the judge had told you before, don't draw any conclusions until after you've heard all of the evidence, because some of the witnesses just won't be in a position to tell you about what happened at one scene, or they'll tell you just bits of what happened at one scene, but they'll be in a great position to tell you about what happened at a different scene. Now the evidence, in this case, will show that in the early morning hours of February 5th of 2015, the birthday of Adrian Moy, he went to 11 Roundhouse Road. But before he got to 11 Roundhouse Road, you're going to learn that Roundhouse Road is basically a development of houses, and that there's a singular entry and exit way, and that it's a circle, and that he took his car which was a Mazda, parked it across the roadway and set it on fire. And that the intention the evidence will show for doing that was to delay the police response to the scene. You'll also, the evidence will also show, I should say, that a device was left near the car at that same location, the way in or out, to look like a bomb. And you'll see pictures of that. And you can see parts of the device over here because obviously the police took it apart to make sure that it wasn't in fact a bomb. And it wasn't a bomb. It was a hoax device. You hear that he also took a rifle and placed it under the deck of a house near the Zero 21 running house room. Now you hear that at this time, February 2nd of 2015, it was a snowy area. It wasn't snowing that night, but there had been snow on the ground. You hear that he went and right in front of where 11 Roundhouse Road is where Lisa and Anna lived under their mailbox, which was a 
developmental, there's a mailbox for all of those units in that one part of the development. You put what would be a boom box, I would suggest to you the colloquial way would describe it as a boom box, which had a radio in an iPod or an iPad or something, you know, a device that can play songs, <clears throat> that he had put certain songs on, battle tunes, as he would describe it. But this also had wires to make it look like if it had been, would be, I'm sorry, were to be moved, it would explode. You'll also hear that he left other devices around the entire roundhouse area, again, to slow the police response for what he was going to do. You hear, as I described, how he entered the house, how he climbed up the stairs, threw the right the truck and down, went in, and revealed himself. You hear that he knew these two individuals, and they knew him, because he also was in the Coast Guard. And they had served together when they were stationed in Kodiak, Alaska. You hear that he was, at that point, basically demanding that they apologize and that they were profusely apologizing. You hear that this wasn't enough, though. You hear that he stepped from the room, and at that time, the two women grabbed the mattress that was on the bed in order to try to protect themselves, to hide behind. He came back in, and he shot 15 times from the beginning, 11 rounds of which were to enter the body of Lisa Trevenkill. And I told you about the four times that he was He done that. You hear how he was dressed, how he had battle fatigues on him, how he had a number of large capacity um, magazines on the belt that he was wearing. You hear him knife on the belt. You hear how after he left, that Anna had already, that Lisa had already tried to call 911 on her phone. So that line had already been established. And that how Anna then tried to communicate with the 911 service. And you may hear what was going on at that time while she was trying to do that. You'll hear that Mr. Lloyd, having left the room of Loving Roundhouse, then begins to go and make his way around the Roundhouse Road circle. You hear there were things discarded at different places. There would be some handcuffs, and the handcuffs would be the type that were the Ziploc kind of uh, handcuffs. You hear that there were other devices that were left around the area. You hear that he ended up at 77 Roundhouse Road, which the way that Roundhouse Road is designed is the so-called high ground. You hear the police were dispatched, and the fire department were dispatched. And at that time, the police didn't know if there was one shooter, two shooters, three shooters. Now they began to try to get around the burning car to assist Anna, who was on the phone with the 911 operator, begging for them to come and help her. You hear how the police would split up two or one, two or the other, and get around the car. And that as while the police were approaching an area near Southern Sun, a parking lot down on the ground, which would be below where Mr. Lawyer was, he began to open fire at them. And that he hit police officer from Bourne, Jared McDonald, in the lower back. You hear what the police had to do to get Mr. McDonald out from that scene into an image. And you hear how the police also had to get to a loving roundhouse to care for him. <clears throat> Anna Savant, and she'll be here and she'll tell you her observations about what happened. You hear how Mr. Lawyer eventually discards at 71 roundhouse road basically the weapons that he had with him at that time, which included a rifle, a handgun, a number of clips that were high capacity, in other words, held more than 10 rounds, knife, and, and such things, and then walked out in order to turn himself in. And you'll hear that he also took off a GoPro device. And I say GoPro as, I would say, Coca-Cola or Phoenix. I think it was actually a movie, but it was a camera in which he could record no audio, just video about what happened. And you're going to be able to see that, and that it was working when he was in the bedroom. But you're not going to be able to see 
everything that you want to be able to see that will tell you everything that happened because whenever you have scenes out with the gun, his arms would be blocking the view of the camera. But you'll be able to see enough, I suggest, to get a good idea of what was going on. You hear that he eventually walked down the street and turned himself in. And he was arrested by the police. And you'll hear about what was found on this person when he was taken into custody. You hear he was brought to the one police station and he was leaving. And you're going to hear about what he says during that interview. You're going to hear how he admits that he did this. And he's going to tell you why he committed this crime. How this was really a revenge killing against Lisa Trevor Cove. And you're going to hear about a supposed incident that happened in Kodiak, Alaska, where Mr. Lloyd, and the only evidence I would suggest to you that comes from this would be from Mr. Lloyd, claims that he was sexually assaulted. And you'll hear what he is saying his sexual assault is, and that he held a grudge pretty much from that point on, and that he targeted her. You'll hear that in October, of 2014, that once Mr. Lloyd, you hear the, I'm sorry, just stop back a bit, you hear that they were stationed in the audience, and eventually they were transferred to other places, that Lisa and Anne were transferred to Cape Cod, Mr. Lloyd was transferred to Virginia, and that he found out where Lisa and Anna were, were living, who used to be intimate, and, and that he got online, and he went to some I believe it's called Zillow, a, a service that's offered on, online. We were able to see the room layout of a room that a lot of the sort of was. In other words, it's like a virtual tour of these units that would have been exactly the same as where they were. You'll hear that he came up in October, stayed at the Quality Inn in Bourne, went to a Lebanon roundhouse in that area and set up a deer camp out in front on a tree in the early morning hours, unseen by anybody as far as we know. You hear that he went back and retrieved the deer king to ensure that that is where they were living, that there are pictures of them coming from that house, that apartment, that he went back to Virginia. And on the way back to Virginia, you hear that he pulled over someplace in Pennsylvania and while in Pennsylvania, he's walking in a field off the highway. And he's filming this with his camera, with his uh, thought. And you'll see this video. And he's going to say into the video that he's contemplating, should he go through with this issue? Should he do this or should he not? And he's going to say, I've thought about this. And if I don't do it, here's what's going to happen to me. They're going to drum me out of the Coast Guard. They're going to say I'm crazy. I don't, want to, I don't want to get drummed out of the Coast Guard. And then he chooses to go ahead. And then he does his back away in February of 2015. <clears throat> now, ladies and gentlemen, as I said before, you need to keep an open mind. You need to wait until all of the evidence is in before you make a determination about whether or not there's been proof beyond a reasonable doubt or there hasn't been proof beyond a reasonable doubt. I ask you to do just that. At the end of the case, I'll be able to address you again and give an argument about the evidence that you've heard. So until then, though, please keep an open mind. Thank you. Thank you, counsel.